Amen. Good singing today. I really appreciate that. It's very encouraging and helpful. Uh, something I want us to think about today is a word as we get started. If I say the word formula, some different things might come to your mind. Probably most of you ladies in here, I say formula, will think, oh, uh, that's uh, what you feed babies. Yeah, that's what you get babies. Uh, there might be some men think of, oh, that's associated with the racing. Uh, it was interesting that just today, as I was checking that word out, I found that formula can mean the method for reconciling different positions. The method for reconciling different positions. Now, uh, you find an interesting situation in Ephesians 4.32. There, there's three statements there, but I want you to notice right in the middle that it says, forgiving one another. Forgiving one another. Now, what I want to do is take the different positions on each side of that. Uh, the formula today is found in the idea of forgiving one another. What two responses do we need to think through that you and I might forgive one another. Well, the first one is to live like the Father. Notice it says in Ephesians 4, 32, be you kind, tender-hearted, or compassionate. It absolutely amazes me as I think of that because there's some verses that talk about that exact thing when Jesus in the book of Luke is teaching the Beatitudes there, and you realize that word blessed means, oh, how happy. And, uh, you know, a lot of happiness is missed when we won't forgive in our hearts. But he says something in Ephesians chapter 6, I mean, Ephesians 6, excuse me, Luke 6, and verse 35 that really gets my uh, attention. Listen to this. But love your enemies... Do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, for He's kind to the unthankful and the evil. Isn't that amazing? He's kind. He demonstrates kindness to the unthankful. That's probably one of the hardest things for me to do. When somebody is unthankful, that that just bothers me so badly, I struggle with it. But then it says not only the unthankful, but to the evil. I mean, you and I, if we hear something evil's happened, what do we think? Well, boy, I hope they get what they deserve. And here it says God's kind to them. Why? Because of verse 36. Therefore, be merciful just as your Father is merciful. That's a big order, isn't it? We're to live like our Father. And our Father is merciful. You realize mercy is God not giving me what I deserve. That's what mercy means. He doesn't give me what I deserve. I love how Paul in Ephesians in verse chapter 2 and verse 4 says this. But God who is rich in mercy... Recently, you know, October is Pastoral Appreciation Month. And uh, recently, we were out at Barn Happy, and uh, Joyce down at TJ's invited us pastors out there for breakfast. Well, I don't know if you've ever been to Barn Happy, but boy, they're desserts. Now, this was breakfast. Now, I wanted to have a healthy dessert, I mean a healthy breakfast. So, I had carrot for breakfast carrot cake and boy it was about that big and it had uh, cream cheese you gotta have a little cheese in it that's healthy icing on it and let me tell you it was rich yummy, yummy. it was yummy yummy that's right but it says god who's rich in mercy aren't you glad that a rich god in rich mercy loves to lavish it on us loves to give it away loves for you to have it because it says, because of his great love, which he has loved us. Now, how Paul had already talked about that in chapter 1, in verse 6, when he says this, To the praise of the glory of his grace, 
by which he has made us accepted in the beloved. You and I are accepted in the beloved, and you know who the beloved is, right? This is my beloved son, and whom all pleased. We're accepted in him. It's not what we do for him, but we're accepted through him. And I'm glad there that it goes on to say in verse 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Oh, wait a minute. We just read about the rich, riches of his mercy. Now we're reading the riches of his grace. And grace is God not giving, I mean, God giving to you and I what we don't deserve. Some people have said grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. And it talks about the riches of his grace, which he hath made to abound towards us. Now I'm sure some of you at one time or another have seen the Cedar River when it's been really high. It's been abounding. I mean, to read the history of here, how, you know, we had to evacuate this place because of where it came. And that's the idea that God's grace abounds towards us. It overflows towards us. We should just stop right here and sing wonderful grace of Jesus, couldn't we? And boy, he's rich in mercy. He's rich in grace. And you and I are to live like that. Those resources are available for allowing you and I to be like God and people need to see us that way. That's why Paul says twice in Ephesians 2, how are we saved? By grace. In Ephesians uh, 2 and verse 5 and Ephesians 2 and verse 8, for by grace are you saved. It's totally out of the riches of his grace that we're saved. There's absolutely nothing you and I can do to earn that. Jesus paid it all. And we're given out of the riches of his redemption the salvation he has for us. Well, the other, that, that's one side of forgiving one another. The other side, remember what he said? Even as God in Christ has forgiven you. The same way. In other words, you and I need to live like, I love like the Father. Love like the Father. Let's go to the cross. Because the cross is the demonstration of God's love. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. When did that happen? On the cross. And God forgives us in that way. Now, there's a list in Ephesians 4 of sins that can happen in our lives. Matter of fact, I'm going to be real judgmental and say probably has happened. <laughs> Maybe even today. That's where uh, I wish you guys could have seen uh, Chaplain Mark's message on anger. Now, if anything has caused any... <laughs> If anything that has caused any reason to be forgiven is anger, isn't it? Right there. And Paul talks about it twice. You know, not to be angry. And, uh, and it, in verse 31 it says, Let all bitterness... Well, where does bitterness come from? I just say bitterness is, is the pus of wounded pride. And lots of times the person that's bitter is because they are angry about something. And they haven't forgiven Wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking. You know, Jesus faced all those things around the cross. I tell people when they say, I, I just, I can't forgive them. I just can't forgive them. I say, wait a minute. On the cross, Jesus faced the worst mentally, emotionally, physically, verbally, that anyone could. And he said, Father, what? Forgive them, for they know not what they do. We need to be willing to forgive as God forgives. I read one time that if you don't transform your pain, you'll transmit it. And that's based on Hebrews 12, 15 that warns of the dangers of being bitter and how much it penetrates. And as a pastor of over 40 years, I've seen that in every church I've been in. Someone wouldn't forgive. They become bitter. And you know who I've seen it afflict the most? 
their children. Their children. If you don't transform the pain, you'll transmit it. Now, you guys know what a transformer is, right? It's not those silly things that you see on shows anymore. I mean, you say transformer, oh yeah, I saw that movie. No, the big transformer's on the pole. Now, you know if that transformer wasn't there and that electri electricity, whew, electricity came into your house, what would happen? It would well, explode. But that transformer takes a power and transforms it into a power that you are blessed by and benefited from. And you know when I see those transformers, I think of Jesus on the cross. He faced the power of God's wrath and transformed it into what blesses you and I. Isn't that great? He didn't transmit the pain. He transformed it into forgiveness. Of course, you guys have heard someone say, you've never said it. I can forgive, but I can't forget. The crisis and the process of forgiveness is forgetting. You have to realize forgetting has the idea is we, we choose not to remember it. I mean, there's a lot of things that come up in our lives that we don't want to remember, isn't there? And we don't. And that's, you're forgetting it. And you say, oh, I still remember it, but you have chosen not to dwell on it. That's the same with God and our sins. He says he, he casts our sins behind our, his back. What's that mean? He's not focusing on it. You know? And I'm sure glad that the blood of Christ cleanses me from what? All sin. Just like we sang about today. So uh, we have to realize the importance of this. Um, something that we learned at a meeting one time, and my wife reminded me of recently, uh, when it comes to forgiveness, you know you have forgiven when you can remember the event without the emotion. You're remembering it, but it's just not, you know, stirring you all up. And boy, you and I get stirred up over things pretty easy, don't we? So what I want you to do is think about something here for a minute. Do you, you know that they play football in America at this time of year? You know? I know you ladies stay up late on Monday nights watching football, right? <laughs> okay. Now, you're, you're at the football field in, in Iowa gets down to the nine yard line and they just can't get any further. So they decide to kick a what? Field goal. Now you know what they've done on that field? They put up a goal post on each end and there's two poles, one on each side. Now for that field goal to be any good, where do you have to kick the football? Right down the middle. Now remember I told you there's three things in this verse. What was the middle one? Forgiving one another. Forgiving one another. And there's times in our lives that we just don't get to the goal. But we can still reach what God wants if we just put that right between the posts. And what were the posts? The first post was live like the Father. Live like the Father. That's one side. Okay, anybody drink coffee around here? So every time you drink coffee, you're going to have to remember this. Okay? You see that? Christ offers forgiveness for sin every day, everywhere. Okay? I want you to really remember that because some of you might drink coffee. And every time you go to drink that coffee, think about, oh God, thank you. Thank you that you've forgiven me. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. You know, I'm so glad for that. But then if there's someone you need to forgive, forgive them. And I know a lot of you are going to be reminded quite often because I know how much coffee you drink. So remember that. So that's one side. Live like the Father. Just be ready and willing to forgive. That fast. That's the way God is. He's ready and willing. Secondly, you need to love like the Father. How can that happen? 
Well, a, a booklet, and you can you can get this from the Daily Bread. Uh, it's called "Clinging to Hope in the Storm," and it's interesting. A, a part of the importance of hope is found in forgiveness. And he says this: forgetting someone means that you release yourself as judge over the offender and transfer the judgment to God. And you know what? I know God makes right judgment, doesn't he? And I don't know about you or something. There's been times that I thought somebody needed to forgive me and when I finally discussed it with her, <laughs> guess who needed to do the forgiving? You know, I, I get like Fonzie every once in a while. <laughs> hey! You know, remember Fonzie on Happy Days? And I remember the one I'll never forget. He he had, he had done something wrong, and he wanted wanted to admit it. He goes, "I was I was I, I made a mistake." Boy, you know anything worse than admitting that you're wrong is that the other person's right. And God is always what right. And I found out sometimes when somebody else is wrong, I find out they weren't wrong, but I was wrong and they were right. You follow that? So when you do that, man, you'll put that, that forgiving right down the middle and you'll score. Now, the wonderful thing about that is you ever noticed when they kick a field goal, do they act happy? Do they act like, hey, something happened? That's because they, the, the kicker especially felt free in his heart and his mind that he'd done what he needed to do. And if you will live like the Father and love like the Father, you'll find a freedom in your heart and mind that you've done what you ought to do. And we should do that because of this song that we want to close with today on the back. Great is thy faithfulness. Chaplain Byron, you come, please.